Good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you are watching this training video. This is the official training for the 2019-2020 Health Rocks grant period. So welcome. Thank you for agreeing to deliver the Health Rocks curriculum this year to youth in your county. Um, I think it will be very successful as this will be our 11th year of having Health Rocks in Tennessee. So that's definitely something that we should be proud of. So a few things that we're going to go over today just so you're aware. Um, it's just a grant overview so you can really understand what Health Rocks is if you've not had it in the past or if it's been a while. Um, implementing this grant, budgeting and reporting, communication, incentive items, evaluation, and some best practices to hopefully help you along the way. So grant overview. So if you don't know what Health Rocks is, um, it's an interactive, hands-on approach to help youth reduce their consumption of tobacco, alcohol, and drugs. So yes, it um, is tobacco and alcohol, and then it says drugs, but um, it also includes opioids um, and using um, e-cigarettes and vaping and dueling and all those types of things as well, which we'll um, go over a little bit more in detail of the curriculum in a few more slides. Um, the curriculum is built into two parts. Um, the first is beginner, and that's for ages 8 through 12, and then the intermediate is built um, where you can teach it for um, 12 through uh, 14 year olds. So middle and high school is the audience that it's targeted to. Um, each lesson can vary from time, uh, depending on how much time you have and how much in depth um, and how much you want to follow the lesson plans that are written out, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So I think, you know, if you're short on time, you could easily cut it down. Um, if you, you know, had more time and wanted to beef it up, I think that there's an opportunity uh, to do that as well. So some goals of Health Rocks, uh, this goes for both of the curriculums, uh, the beginner and intermediate. It's to reduce youth smoking and tobacco use, um, and I, I wouldn't put a drug use in there as well, um, really just substance abuse in general. Um, help youth build life skills, which lead to healthy lifestyle choices with special emphasis on youth smoking and tobacco use prevention. Um, with the doing all that, help youth understand the influences and health consequences of tobacco, drug, and alcohol use to make healthy choices. The two other goals of the program include um, pieces of like the partnership, so engaging youth and adults in a partnership to develop and implement community strategies that promote healthy lifestyle choices. Um, and then building positive, enduring relationships, which I think we do with our 4-H programs, um, just the traditional ones in general, um, but this is just kind of reiterating that and then bringing it back around to that partnership um, so youth um, and also teens feel like they are engaged and um, they have a say in the program that they um, are um, involved with. So some implications with the program is that the chances that some of the youth you're going to have in your program have actually tried tobacco, alcohol, or some type of drug. Maybe um, they have done it, done it all. Um, you, you really don't know unless they volunteer that information. Um, those that are at the younger end of um, the age group, maybe 8, 9, 10, are really um, more on the edge of deciding whether to experiment with substances or not. Um, and so this is the time whenever this program um, can hopefully make a big impact on them and help push them towards the decision of not trying anything. Um, I think you also have to think about those that have family members or other people in their lives that they are around that use tobacco products, drink alcohol, use illegal drugs, um, or misuse prescriptions, um, or over-the-counter drugs. So while we think, yeah, eight years old is really young um, to come in contact with those things, um, it's really just the reality um, in the world we live in, sadly. And the last thing, the youth that are in middle or junior high, um, they're, you know, going through a time when they're changing um, 
from going to elementary to middle to high school and so they're facing new and challenging social and academic situations and they may be exposed um, more to alcohol and cigarettes so once again this is a perfect time um, where Health Rocks comes in and can help them uh, make the decision of saying no. Other implications um, is to understand that younger youth are not only wrestling with issues of substance experimentation and use, they are trying to figure out who they are and how they fit into life in general. And that can be really tough, um, you know, on a on a young person um, trying to figure out you know um, what they are as a person their personality what they like and don't like you know who their friends are um, so just keep those things in mind as you go through the lessons um, and I think the biggest part of um, Health Rocks is um, making you feel empowered so that they know how um, to say no they have the skills to help protect themselves and they you know have the ability to make good decisions and this is one of my favorite things youth are good by nature and need strong support to develop healthy lives so we're there to be that strong support um, you know be that positive role model um, that impact um, the positive impact that they need to make those um, great decisions so for this 2019-2020 year, we will reach 14,000 youth across the state, and that's our minimum reach. That is our commitment to National 4-H Council, and you can see the map here. So along with 16 counties and then the three camps, um, which I've highlighted in a lighter green uh, county-wise, that is where we will reach all of these 14,000 youth for this year, um, plus, plus some maybe even. Um, and this also includes working with 400 to 600 teen leaders mentors, so those who are going to be trained by you, the agent, or a volunteer to go and deliver the program to younger youth, um, and that is their involvement in the program. So why Health Rocks? These are some stats from the 2017 Youth Risk Behavior Survey for Tennessee. Um, that data comes out every two years, so um, or collected every two years and then comes out. So it's being collected for 2019. So next year-ish sometime we will have even more um, fresh statistics. But um, even with that being said, you can look at these stats on your screen, and I think they're um, kind of daunting. Um, 13.2% of youth have taken prescription pain meds without a doctor prescription. Um, that kind of goes into the whole opioid epidemic. 31.6% um, of youth have smoked cigarettes at least once. 33.8% youth have used marijuana at least once. Um, and from what I remember, that stat increased from the 2015 um, survey. 40.3% um, of youth have used e-vape products, so I don't know that many of us are surprised at that large number, and that one, of course, has increased from that 2015 survey as well. And then youth who have tried alcohol is 57.6% of youth. Um, and I don't think this one increased much from 2015, but I know that it didn't go down. So um, that's still a pretty large number. Um, you can tell it's the largest one out of all of these stats. But um, in regards to alcohol, youth who drink alcohol on a regular basis is 25.8%. And I think what they consider um, regular basis is um, a couple drinks a day. Um, and so when you think youth drinking a couple drinks a day, well, number one, of course, they're underage. But um, I think that's a pretty large number. A quarter of those um, youth um, engage in those kinds of activities. And so annually over $2 billion is spent on medical costs related to substance abuse in Tennessee. So I think that's pretty dramatic. Um, and so hopefully this is where Health Rocks can come in um, and lower these statistics, um, hopefully. So. So implementation of this grant. So these are just a couple of guidelines and reminders. So the grant period is September 1st, 2019, here in a couple of days, through August 31st of 2020. That means you have a whole year to uh, fulfill your requirements of serving the youth that you said you were going to serve in your application. Um, and that is with 10 hours of high quality direct instructional programming. So. Um, you know, we don't want this to be something that is over the computer or over the phone kind of thing. It needs to be in person, hands on, you know, they're getting up, um, whatever, engaging. Um, 
has to include teen leaders, as I kind of already mentioned on the other slide, and use the Health Rocks official curriculum. So we'll go over curriculum in just a minute because it was updated this year. So if you are reaching 100 youth or more, um, you are required to um, administer 100 surveys, and we'll go through evaluation here in a little bit. Um, but for example, if you are serving 50 youth, then you need to collect 50 surveys. Obviously, you can't collect 100 surveys if you're only serving 50 youth. If you're only serving 75 youth, um, 75 surveys. So I hope that makes sense for those of you um, who are serving less than 100 youth. Um, you should only use the Health Rocks logo and refer to the program as 4-H Health Rocks. So please don't change um, the logo or change the name as you advertise and market in your county. Um, as I've said, we've had this program for 11 years now um, in Tennessee, and I think that's something to be proud of. And um, I believe, you know, for sure all extension agents know what Health Rocks is at this point, um, you know, because we've been consistent with our logos and what we call it and that kind of thing. So we just don't want to stray away from that. Um, we want the, um, you know, Health Rocks logo to, you know, really be a reminder whenever, whoever sees that, the public, those who have been involved in the program, team leaders, um, they know what it is when they see it and they're not confused. So we just don't want to change that. Um, submit quarterly reports and final um, on or before the due date, and we'll go through report um, expectations um, in just a moment. Submit your monthly budget sheet with receipts to me, um, and include an impact story and photo with the quarterly reports and the final report. So um, we talked about partnerships are an important piece of this um, and really serving as positive role models um, and that kind of thing. So when teens and adults come together and they serve um, as co-leaders, um, it really gives the teens an opportunity um, to, you know, to serve in that leadership role. Um, teens often connect better with younger youth than adults do. Just, um, you know, younger youth think teens are so cool, and that's fine. Um, that gives the adult, whether that's you, the agent, or a volunteer, a break from having to get up and talk. Um, you know, and, and you are helping a teen um, work on their leadership skills, their public speaking, um, you know, learning how to lead a lesson and follow through and those kinds of things, and that's important skills um, for the teens themselves. Um, also, teens bring fresh ideas to the program, so, you know, they may have new ideas. If, if you've done Health Rocks for all 11 years that we've had it, or a big chunk of it, maybe some teens have, um, you know, some other ideas that you haven't thought of that can just change it up a little bit. Um, teens provide honest feedback, and often that is better than some things that adults would say. Um, and as role models, teens, teens provide younger youth something to aspire to and help maintain their involvement. So I kind of already mentioned that. Um, teens are often proficient in technology skills. So I'll kind of go into social media in a little bit. But, um, you know, this is, you know, a great thing that we can use teens for if they really enjoy um, things that are more technological. And we don't have to spend time learning it um, and focus on other things. It's another great way to involve them and let them be part of this partnership. Uh, teens are often current with trends, so they know what's going on in the schools. Um, they're around their peers, um, whereas we may not um, be around them in that same atmosphere. And then teens are often able to recruit additional teens. So, you know, um, teens may have friends that want to be involved and, in, you know, that that new friend's going to be involved because their friend's already doing it. So, um, you know, it's a good recruitment tool and um, your teens that are serving as teen leaders and as your partner um, can help you um, recruit more teens to lead or be involved. So, um, really to say, teens benefit from working in partnership with caring adults um, and it allows the teens to explore and try out new roles and skills um, in a safe environment. So, it's okay for them to fail. Um, you know, they have you to ask questions to and be prepared for and, you know, also provide them the resources um, of your office, um, the group to go and speak to or um, teach to and those kinds of things. So the experiential learning model, which none of us, I think, are new to, but just a nice little refresher and kind of how um, you can use this um, in the Health Rocks program. So um, you can really think of this as in three pieces. So um, the experience, number one, is the do piece. 
um, then the two, which is share, and three is process. Those are the reflection pieces. And then the third piece is apply, and that um, actually includes generalize and uh, apply four and five. So experience is for letting the youth experience with new ideas, interest, and projects, and they direct their own learning. So this is kind of the part where they are in this um, partnership with you. They're directing what they are involved in and in learning as they're going through this program. So you're describing the activity that, that you're going to have them do. You're going to encourage them to think about what they might see or what might happen, and then let them experience it, perform it, and do it. So two, uh, which is share. So ask questions about the activity and experience after they have completed it. Um, so the youth will describe their re results and their reactions. And then process. Um, so youth relate the experience by discussing and analyzing. So ask questions about something that was important about the experience. And then the youth analyze the experience and reflect upon the results. And then generalize, so youth connect the experience to real world examples. So I think there's lots of world, ex real world examples we can pull in from things that we learn of Health Rocks, whether that's new samples, that could be something in your community that's gone on, um, you know, there could be statistics, so whatever that might be. Um, and then the last one is apply. So help participants apply what they have learned to their lives. Give them opportunities to practice these new skills or use new information. Um, so I know there's a few lessons in um, the Health Rocks curriculum where they actually get to practice, um, like saying no in certain situations. So it's a good little like skit. Um, and they get to practice what they can do in um, real life. So just a couple of things I want to point out. I know these are a little bit older, 2017, not really, but um, a couple of links if you want to go to YouTube and look. Um, the first one features Marion County, and that was 2012. And then um, there is Gibson County featured in um, the opioid epidemic. And I think this video um, includes more about the university um, itself and how um, different pieces um, of the university system are trying to combat, combat the opioid epidemic. So I kind of already mentioned updated curriculum and logo. So if you have um, um, noticed on the first one of the first slides, the Health Rocks logo is now really only um, three colors if you count the clover. So previously it was not. It had that bright pink in it. Um, it had an orange and a green. Um, so it's a little bit funky. It's a little bit outdated and National Council recognized that. Um, they had uh, sent surveys out and asked of different ideas, um, came up with a different tagline. So you'll notice that it says um, the tagline is inspired to be substance free. So it even rhymes, which is lovely. Um, these are also what the curriculum looks like now. So you'll see the one that's got kind of a blue background says beginner level. And then the other one, intermediate level, is kind of like a tan or nude background. Um, with that being said, um, there are still lots of the same lessons in here um, from the old curriculum. I know there's too many that were so good that we don't definitely want, don't want to get rid of. Um, but just know things have been updated. They've updated like some of the, the facts and the statistics. There's been things added in um, for um, opioids and for um, e-vaping and juuling, which was very much needed. Um, so just know that that is in there as well. Um, there's also a new intro lesson for these that helps set the stage for the whole Health Rocks curriculum. Um, there's an additional chapter with four new lessons on building healthy relationships. So that part has kind of been enhanced a little bit. Um, and then there's um, five existing lessons that were um, refreshed. So the ones I was talking about um, that have just a couple um, things updated to it. Um, and then there is also um, every chapter now has a learn it, live it section. So it's for extended learning opportunities. So, you know, if you have more time to fill or if you want to um, utilize those pieces after you deliver the program, um, just know that that is there. I also want to say um, each of you will be receiving one copy of Beginner and Intermediate um, in the mail shortly. Um, they were mailed out um, on Wednesday, or sorry, Monday, um, 
the 26th, I believe, um, if I can get my days right. So you should be receiving them shortly. Um, if you need more than one copy of each, please let me know, and I'll be happy to um, get you um, more copies. Um, in the old one, there was also a CD-ROM. Um, obviously, now that it's 2019, we've kind of gone away from using CDs. So um, National Council is said they are sending a link with all of the materials. So as soon as they send me that link, I will share that with you as well. So you can directly print out any worksheets um, that you may need rather than having to copy it. So um, many of you may be aware, um, uh, President Randy Boyd for the University of Tennessee um, had hosted a um, SOAR, uh, it's a Summit for Opioid Addiction um, and Response, and I just noticed that's spelled wrong up there, sorry, um, but uh, I attended this, it was a two-day summit here on campus, um, and there were all kinds of different people from many different sectors um, that attended this, from pharmacists, um, previous addicts, those that have, um, you know, experienced, um, you know, this themselves, um, community members, local nonprofits, um, nurse practitioners. I mean, there were so many different kinds of people there. So with that being said, I attached the link here for the agenda if you want to go um, and read through it. And then the agenda actually has like the speakers, um, a copy of their presentations, and then the YouTube links. Um, so you can see them at the summit um, speaking on that. So if you want to go listen to that, um, there were lots of um, very interesting speakers. Um, they shared some stats. Um, that I think may be beneficial um, with Teaching Health Rocks, um, but it's just there to serve as a resource for you. Um, I do want to point out there was one person, Dr. Stephen Lloyd, he is a recovering addict himself, but um, opened a place called Journey Pure, um, and his uh, uh, presentation was on addiction is not a moral failure. So, um, just thought that was interesting and I wanted to share um, that's that YouTube link to watch the video so you don't have to type the long link in is under that agenda as well and then um, Justin also had the opportunity to speak on health rocks very briefly um, and so I wanted to include that video just in case you wanted to see it um, and check it out so that's just a quick resource for you um, also, I discovered this one last year. It's called justthinktwice.gov, and then if you do slash drugs, um, here's a screenshot of it. It has a drug index, and so um, the things that they're called, so like fentanyl, for example, if you click on these buttons, it like goes into detail about them, and I think it has some stats. So um, there's also some pictures there, so that might be useful for you as you are um, delivering the Health Rocks program. Also, um, um, you can see the old colors here of the Health Rocks. Um, I don't know that they have developed a supplemental guide just yet um, for the new curriculum, but um, this one is here. Um, you can go through the new curriculum and see if you need any extra stuff, um, and feel free to look through this as well. The supplemental guide is a link. It is not a printed document, so um, I'll share that link with you, and if you want to print it, um, you can print it at your office. Another one that is um, just good, I don't know that you'd want to print it because it's so many pages, but um, it's the Drugs of Abuse, it's the DA Resource Guide, so it's kind of like that um, drugs website that I just went over. It has all the drugs and like stats and uh, all different kinds of things you'd ever want to know uh, about all of the different kinds of drugs. So just can serve as a resource for you and I just want you to know it's there. And then I just wanted to share a couple of things from previous years in Tipton County. Um, I know Bridget went to a Boys and Girls Club, and so this is the, um, in the old curriculum, this was Beginner Activity 2B, um, I think called J Don't Get Dragged Down. Um, they use clothes hangers um, and um, little um, index cards to tie to the um, clothes hangers, and the lesson is to don't get dragged down, um, making healthy options when making um, a decision and predicting consequences of each option. So it also goes through problem solving and decision making. In Robertson County, um, this is just another thing to keep in mind. Um, invite local law enforcement to come in um, and teach a lesson um, with you. Um, it, you know, replace, not replace you, but 
um, there to supplement what you're doing. So um, this officer used um, sweet and low packets um, to teach about fentanyl. Um, and if you don't know, um, I should have included a picture, but um, fentanyl is so deadly you can even see like the grain uh, compared to a penny as um, what can kill you. So it's a very, very small amount. And so this officer used sweet and low, and, um, which is a really great idea. So just keep in mind um, your um, resources and others in your community that can come in and speak on the topic, um, you know, just kind of enhance and um, give the youth a different face to look at sometimes um, and yourself a break um, from not teaching the program. And then at the 4-H Center, um, this is using a golf cart and days and confused goggles. So you can see the difference between being under the influence and not, um, and you know, the difference of how good you can and can't drive. So. Okay, and everybody's favorite part, um, budgeting and reporting. So um, as you all are aware, you're in your proposal, you um, submitted a budget um, based on how many youth you were going to serve times five dollars, um, and then you um, said how much you wanted to spend for supplies and how much for travel. So um, I will get your proposal sent to you just so you definitely have a copy. Um, if there's any changes needed or questions about it, you will um, be asked that in the email. Um, but otherwise, what you submitted is what was approved. Um, and if you want to change that throughout the year, uh, you need to let me know first. So for example, if you end up spending more on supplies, but you still have money in your travel budget, um, we can move that over. But please um, give me a heads up, ask first, um, and then we'll go from there. So if you do not have a 4-H procurement card, that is going to be your best option for spending funds. Um, please know you cannot use FCS procurement cards um, for 4-H um, uh, budgets, especially since this is a grant account. Um, we can't transfer that over. You also cannot use county Quicken accounts. Um, you can't use foundation accounts that you may have. Um, so I know that can be a little bit confusing if you've not done this before, but just a heads up, um, a 4-H procurement card really is the best um, and quickest option. But another option is um, to use your own personal funds. So whether whatever you use your own personal credit or debit card, um, cash or check or whatever, um, and then get reimbursed using a T44 form um, that will go um, to Leela Moore in our office with a copy of your receipt. And then I also need you to make sure you keep a copy of that um, so you can send to me, you know, for your own purposes. But a PDF copy of those are just fine. Um, and so you can also do um, an invoice. Um, if you have the invoice made out to University of Tennessee, um, not your name, not Shelby Bronner, or anything like that. It just can say University of Tennessee. And if you email or mail that to me, I can get it paid that way as well. So just three different options for the way that you can spend money. Um, so it's, it's totally up to you, but honestly, the quickest and that way you are not out of any personal money and waiting for reimbursements is a 4-H procurement card. And if you have questions of how to apply for that, um, please just let me know and I'll help walk you through that process. And then also, um, any single item over $100 requires approval from me first. Um, I'm not doing that to be mean, um, but it's just to make sure that we're not going out and spending $600 on something crazy that we don't need. Um, you know, we have to be good stewards of our money. Um, you know, there is a donor that's giving money um, for the program to be implemented, and we just want to make sure that now that we're on 11 years of having this grant, um, that we continue that. So um, I'm very quick to respond. Um, you can email or call, whatever you want to do. Um, but please know that if you don't get approval first before you purchase it, um, there's a possibility it could not be approved and you will have to use county funds or figure out how to cover that cost. So just keep that in mind as going forward. Um, that doesn't mean that if you order a bunch of t-shirts and the total of all your t-shirts cost $100, that is not the, um, you know, that's not that situation. It's if one item itself costs $100. And then the last date um, I want to put out here for budget is that all funds must be spent by June 30th of 2020. So just keep that in your mind. If you plan on implementing programming 
through July and August um, to reach the rest of your youth that you need to buy any supplies that you need um, to implement that program by the end of June. So I'll try to remember to send out reminders to you all, um, but definitely go ahead and put this date on your calendar, put it on a sticky note, whatever you need to do to remind yourself that that is the last day to spend funds. So more budgeting. Um, National Council tries to keep us on track with spending as a state, and sometimes that can be a little challenging um, because we don't exactly serve 25% of our youth in the first quarter, 50%, and so on. Um, and I mean that as far as saying we haven't served 25% um, of our youth served with 10 hours. They may be all be in progress, um, but it, it doesn't stay exactly on track. Um, However, um, we do the best we can, and I know you all do as well. Um, but I just kind of want to throw this out just to keep everybody on track the best we can. Um, and, you know, if you have a strange circumstance, just reach out and let me know. It's never too big of a deal as long as we know ahead of time. So um, the example I have is if you're reaching 100 youth, your total budget will be $500, right, because you're getting $5 per youth. So by the end of December, which is the first quarter, you should have spent $125, and that's 25%. So a little under over is fine. And then by the end of the second quarter, which is April, you should have spent 50%, so $250. And so, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, this doesn't apply if you had said that you're going to deliver programming at one specific time, um, such as the fall or the spring, or if you're doing a summer camp. So um, just keep that in mind. If you have questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out. So your budget tracking sheet is due at the end of every month. Um, if you've had a grant with me, this is nothing new to you. I do have a new part that we're going to try this year, but um, a budget tracking sheet is nothing new um, being due at the end of every month. So this essentially is just what you have spent for the month. It's writing it down, keeping track of it, sending it to me to make sure we're on the same page just because we have grant funds and we have 20 different people using the same account number. So I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page. Nobody's underspending or overspending. Um, you know, everybody is getting um, the amount that they said they would and that kind of thing. So um, if you end up spending zero dollars for the month, um, just put a zero um, under the September on your um, your sheet, your tracking sheet, just so um, that I know even though it's blank, um, it doesn't mean that I'm waiting on you to fill something in. Um, I know that you're at zero dollars, so that means you spent zero money. So when I'm talking about new this year, instead of using an Excel sheet that you would save on your computer and then email it to me and then I'm going to send you a copy um, after I've checked it, um, you know, we're kind of waiting on each other. Um, I'm waiting on you to send it to me and then you're waiting on me to check it. Um, and I know things get a little bit crazy for all of us. Um, and so I think let's try using Google Sheets this year. Um, so um, with the university, you have a free Google account, a Google Drive account. So, and Google Sheets is meaning just it's just Excel, honestly. Um, you know, there's Google Docs and those kinds of things. So, this way, um, we can just share a link that you can click, I can click, you can go in and enter your stuff, um, and then I can automatically see it. Um, and then once I get a chance to go through and actually confirm that that's what is in IRS, that's what your receipt says, and so on, um, I'll put my initial beside um, the items and it's been checked off and we're good and then you don't have to wait on me to email it back to see um, if you know I have verified everything is good on our end um, and so forth so um, with that being said um, I still do need a copy of your receipt sent to me um, that correlate with that month's spending so you can just PDF a copy. You do not have to send me um, a copy in the mail. So please save a stamp, save some paper. Um, and if once again, if you spent your personal money, please um, PDF me a copy of your T44 and receipt. Um, the T4, just in case you're wondering what that is, is for example, if you went to, I don't know, a farmer's market and bought something and um, there wasn't a receipt, or if, for example, you lost a receipt and the store is not able to reprint it, you can fill it out and then they can, like you have to have the store manager or person sign off on it. So if you could just keep up with your receipt, then you don't have to fill out that form. Um, and then the T44, I can send a copy of that if you need it. It's pretty straightforward. It's just you filling it out with the expense, your information, basically of who to write the check to, and then what account to charge. 
So um, here's a screenshot of the Google Sheet. So I created, um, it looks pretty much the same as they have in the past. Uh, things I did different um, this year is I did put a percent spent on the end of it, just kind of going back to um, keeping up with how much have I spent. So, you know, if you're in December, you know, if you have spent 25% or more um, or where you're at, you know, if it's the, the first quarter and you've spent 25%, you're right on par. If you're under or over, um, you kind of know where you stand. Um, and you can kind of gauge that with, um, in your mind, how many youth you have already reached or are in progress to reach. So just there to serve as a tool for you. It should auto-populate and auto-fill. And if not, because we both have access at all times now, I can change that and I'll be able to see if it's, you know, calculating that correctly. But you can see that if you look at the very bottom, this is the balance tab. So um, you can fill in your county name, how many youth. So this is just an example, but this is based off you're reaching 500 youth. Um, and so your budget is $2,500. So you know how much you started out with, um, how much you still have left, how much you've spent, and then the percent that you have, been, you have spent so far. So here's the next tab. So the supplies expenses. So I did change this up a little bit this year. Um, We'll see how it works. Um, I like to do this for my, my own personal um, tracking of funds. But it's just kind of a running item. It almost looks like a bank statement in a way. Um, and I, on this example, I didn't put an explanation. But just an example, um, you have your balance, and then you just go through and you write out um, the date that you purchased something, where you purchased it, the amount, and then it'll, find, it'll just keep a running balance for you, and then you can write out your explanation. And so then um, the next column over, I'll go through and I'll put um, my initials after I've double-checked and everything looks good. And the last tab is expenses for travel. So keeping the supplies and travel tabs um, separate just so um, we're, we've already budgeted them out separate. So let's keep them separate for now. But exact same thing. And I've got the explanation here. Um, so for your mileage, however you track that, whether you do each little trip or whether you do, okay, all of my travel for September and then give an explanation over here is fine. So it just keeps us all on the same page. Um, and hopefully um, this works pretty smoothly now that we can both see it at the same time. It's live and it's not a document that lives on your computer and my computer um, and so on. So moving on from budget, um, the quarterly reports. So um, I will send you a survey link um, for you to complete. Um, and it's typically two weeks that I can send that out before the due date. Um, I just kind of wait on National Council to send it to me. But um, I've included some questions here that they typically ask just to prepare you. Um, they usually ask accomplishments and impact. So basically um, the great things that have went on and then the challenges and obstacles. So things that didn't go so well. Um, progress you have made in achieving what you said you were going to. Any um, partners or collaborations that you've made. And then they always ask, I know this question is on every single report, the number of youth that you have reached that have received less than 10 hours, so we would call those youth in progress, um, and then the youth who have received at least 10 hours um, or more, and if they receive more, that's fine too, but um, just know we're going to need those numbers for sure. So as soon as I get that information, I will share that with you um, once I can. So here's just a slide with some important dates. So your budget sheet, like I said, due at the end of every month. So now that we're doing the Google Sheets and it's just a link, um, I just need to know that if I go and look on October 1st of 2019, that your um, expenses for the month of September are updated. That's essentially what that's going to mean. And I'll, uh, I'll try my best to send out reminders for you to update your sheet. Um, but just know those dates look overwhelming, but they're just there as reminders. Um, reports. So these are the dates the reports will be due to me. So with that being said, I'll try to send them out um, at the beginning of every month. Um, so um, the first quarter report is December 16th. Second quarter is March 16th. Uh, third is June 15th. And then the final is September 15th. Um, <clears throat> December and March the 15th fail on a Sunday. So that makes no difference to me because I don't plan to check my email on um, Sunday. Um, or entering reports. So we'll, we just move those to the Mondays the 16th. Um, please know the, the reports, they cover basically September until that time frame. Um, so the um, quarter one report is September to November 30th, um, and then the March is September to February 28th. The June is September until um, May 30th, 
or 31st. And then the September report, of course, is everything that you have done from September 1 of um, 19 to August 31 of 20. So um, I'll, I'll include all of that information when I send out the reports, but I just wanted to give you a heads up um, and let you know. I know sometimes it can be confusing of, um, you know, is the report from the beginning of the grant or is it just since I've done the last report? So um, it will always be from the beginning of the grant period. The training um, released August 28th and for you to complete by September 25th um, and just quickly fill out the survey saying that you have completed it. So I know that you have listened to all of this wonderful information and that you have no questions or if you do, you reach out and ask. And then the evaluation, which we will go through in a minute, um, those are due September 5th of 2019. So the same day your final report is due. So communication. Um, so um, I've done this for the past year or two with doing just one-on-one -on -one rather than a group conference call. It works better because everyone seems to actually ask me questions and I can ask each person themselves a question about that specific county. Um, you know, I get a real-time update of what's going on. Um, and I, I think it just makes everybody more comfortable. Um, it lets you all only have to give up five to 10 minutes of your day um, in rather than 30 minutes to an hour that kind of thing so we're just we'll, we'll do a quarterly call um, so every three months we'll do one in September December March and June so um, for September I'll probably try to make it towards the end of the month since we're really just getting started um, December will probably be um, the first or second week since we'll be going into um, the holiday um, but this is really a very open conversation. You can um, let me know how things are going. If you're having any struggles, you need something from me, um, your budget, you know, I can see that you have updated your wonderful new Google Sheet. Um, you know, are you on track? You know, are you falling short? Um, what you plan to do to finish out the grant period, how it's going collecting surveys, etc. So um, I will um, send a link to a Google Sheet as well for you to sign up for the time that you're available for each month. You can sign up for more than one time slot um, and I'll send you the final time um, in a calendar invite. Um, and I hope you all know this, but if you don't, please, 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 please reach out to me at any time if you need to discuss the grant. Um, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm here to serve you and I'm here to help you be successful. That is what my job is for. It's here to make this easier on you. I know you're boots on the ground and you have a million and one things going on. So please, if I can do something to help you to, um, you know, make this easier. Maybe the Google Sheets aren't working. Maybe when you go back to the Excel or if you have other ideas just to help things be more smooth. Um, um, you know, um, communication wise, delivering the program, whatever that is, please reach out, um, email or call me. Um, I do think I'm pretty quick to return emails um, if I'm sitting at my computer, of course. Um, if I'm not traveling, um, I do always set up auto reply, so you're going to get an auto response and you'll know if I'm traveling. Um, and I usually always try to include the dates that I will return so you'll know that. Um, the, the one more thing I want to say about communication that's the biggest piece um, with helping grants go smoothly um, if you do not anticipate to reach your youth if something falls through if you can't get into a school or a boys and girls club falls through you know um, you know the youth more so than like one or two didn't show up less you know really like a big chunk please let me know as soon as you know that and don't let me know next august when we have you know a month to try to figure out how we're going to serve 200 youth so you know we have an expectation from us to national council um you know to follow through and reaching these 14,000 youth so um it's just keeping up with each of you individually and making sure we're all on track to do what we um, say we're going to do you know and if we get to the point where i need to come to your county and help you deliver programming then that's what we'll do. So please know that I'm here to help you and I'm here to support you. Um, and, you know, just let me know if you ever need anything. Incentive items. So incentive items um, need to be approved by me first before purchasing. So this is in addition to the $100 um, single items as well. Um, as you send that to me, I need you to tell me what the item is that you're purchasing. So is it water bottles or frisbees or ink pens or notebooks or drawstring bags, whatever that is, um, the total cost that you plan to spend, the quantity you're going to purchase, um, and the artwork. 
um, I've worked with uh, Four Imprint in the past, um, and they send you an artwork link, and I think other companies do this too, but it's for you to confirm if, like, basically it looks good of what you said. And this is just to make sure that we're using the Health Rocks logo like we're supposed to, and that comes from National Council. That doesn't come uh, from me just making something up. Um, that's just making sure we're all good, and then once again, I quickly approve it, and then we just both move on. It's all good. Um, so be mindful of the amount of funds that you spend on incentive items, and especially at the time you purchase. If you're going to make a big purchase at the beginning of your grant period, I want to know that you're good um, with purchasing any supplies needed to implement the program. You have enough money, um, whatever, to buy the paper plates and the clothes hangers and the paper and that kind of thing because you know that's the first thing we want to make sure that we can deliver the program um, but you know if you want to buy a small item now for example like maybe pencils or you know um, erasers or stickers whatever it is um, and you know then along the way once you're through your grant period and you kind of know that you don't need any more supply money you've got that covered and you have a little bit of money left over and you want to buy a larger item maybe um, a, a water bottle or drawstring bag to give to the youth after they've completed the 10 hours completed their survey there's nothing wrong with that that is perfectly fine so if you have any questions about incentives um, what you can buy there's no really what you can't buy um, we're not going to buy $50 items per kids but um, there's no like item that's off limits or anything that I can think of off my mind um, and if you know you just need some ideas want to um, talk things through just let me know um, and we'll brainstorm So moving on to the next best thing, evaluation. So um, I kind of already mentioned this when I was going through implementation regarding the 100 surveys that you need to collect. I've already said this, but it's here on the screen again as a reminder. Um, but I will print and mail 100 copies of the survey to your office um, unless you email and tell me that you do not want any uh, paper surveys and you just rather do the survey electronically. Um, whenever I send um, out the email regarding the survey, I'll, I'll um, put that in there and you can email and let me know um, but I'll print them out for you that way you don't have to use your paper and ink at your office um, but there are two options to delivering the health rocks survey so the one is the traditional paper and pencil method so you give the uh, 4-H or the paper and a pencil they answer the questions you collect it and then um, instead of um, mailing them to the office so um, that eliminates having to use postage um, you will enter or someone in your office will enter that data into the survey link so um, this link will also be the same link that the youth would use to answer the survey themselves so if you have access to a computer lab or Chromebooks at schools or if you just have extra iPads or um, if they have phones or um, computers whatever the case may be um, this is the most environmental friendly because we do not have to print um, you know and mail and that kind of thing surveys um, but it's also a time saver because they just go in and directly answer the questions themselves rather than you or someone in your office having to go back and enter that data um, so if you have questions about um, which method to use or um, you know if you just want to talk that through um, let me know um, but if you do want to do paper and pencil that's definitely no issue um, we can um, mail you those paper surveys, no problem. And so um, I know I've mentioned this before, but um, all the data must be entered into the link by September 15th. So if you're having the youth do it, uh, or, or you or someone else in your office is entering based on the paper questions, um, it will need to be entered by September 15th. And so to finish off with just a few best practices to help you along your way. So some social media best practices and way that you can um, use social media. It can be used to boost participation of ongoing programs um, and supplement educational programming. Um, so you can boost participation through posting about current educational programs, upcoming programs, um, posting flyers um, of different things that you might have going on. It can supplement programs that you already have going on. Um, you can host contests um, on your website for a small prize, share related news articles and stories when it's appropriate, um, post resources that are educational or related um, for programs that you might have going on. Um, 
um, you can engage audiences with those contests, use the, um, the, those gifts and the videos, um, reply to your comments, use hashtags so you can follow things, use polls and ask, ask people questions. Um, I know it's very popular right now using um, polls on the stories. Um, if you do stories in Facebook or Instagram, you can ha ask polls. Um, and that seems to be very popular right now. So it's a great option um, for whatever, just asking questions related to Health Rocks that might engage um, our middle school, high school audience that we're serving. So um, there's a little list there of different um, apps you can use and social media platforms. But I also want to add in, don't let this be daunting and overwhelming. This is, once again, a perfect spot for you to use a team leader um, to help you with this. Let them feed you content. If you aren't comfortable with them having the password to the um, your county account, let them feed you content. So give them a date that you need in you know, an idea emailed to you and you can just literally copy and paste um, and put it on whatever social media platform. That way you're not trying to spend time on thinking of something creative um, when it, you know, probably takes a team two seconds to think of something. So you can assign someone as the Health Rock social media chair, for example. That would be a great, um, a great idea. So they can send you the pictures and the videos, any of the content, and the contest ideas. So Literally, all you would have to do is copy and paste. So just keep that in mind as an option um, moving forward. These are a couple of ideas that the, the Monroe County one might be a little bit old, six years, but just a couple things just to keep things posted, um, you know, letting people out in the community know what's going on. Um, you can see Shelby County used a Shelby County extension hashtag. You could use the Health Rocks hashtag, um, you know, post the logo, um, the Health Rocks logo that is with it, um, just to keep that branding um, and it's, it's recognizable across the state. And then marketing strategies, um, kind of going into um, same thing with social media, but um, brag. Don't be afraid to brag about the things that you have going on through the program. Um, let the participants, the ones who are actually doing all of the activities, let them do the selling. Use the quotes that they, um, the things that they might say to you. You can even have the opportunity to ask them, um, you know, cognitive feedback of the program. After you do an activity, let them um, have a ticket out the door and drop an answer in a bucket of what they love today or what they maybe didn't love so much or what they wish they would have learned or want to learn. Learn. Um, you can ask those questions and then you can use those quotes, you know, um, whatever. If you want to put it on a flyer, um, use it in an impact story for your um, quarterly reports, whatever the case might be. Um, newsletter, so reach out to schools and other community facilities to um, see if you could post a newsletter, um, whether it's paper or whether it's electronic, but if you can include um, a newsletter of some sort, whether it's um, for your county extension office or if it's for Health Rocks, whichever, but just see if you have the opportunity um, to share that. And then um, participate in fairs. I know there's many health fairs. Um, you could even do things at um, back to school bashes, um, end of the school celebrations, um, fall festivals, um, those kinds of things to promote uh, the grant. So a few more best practices just to help you along your way. Um, think about your goals. So think about um, the youth that you plan to reach, the where, like the avenue, if you're going to do that through a school, is it an after school program, are you doing it with the Boys and Girls Club, whatever that might look like. Think about what you're going to do, write out your steps to get there, what do I need to do today. Um, you know, to go reach my 100 youth at whatever ABC middle school. So just keeping yourself on track, um, you know, planning out your months of the grant period um, so that um, you, you can very successfully accomplish all of your goals. Um, take lots of photos of the activities going on for reports. While I say the requirement is one photo for each report, you can definitely, definitely send me more than one. We can always use them. Um, and then um, I would hope that you do have a photo release, whether that's um, through the enrollment form or um, F600 or you've collected them separately. Um, I, I believe there is a copy of just a, a photo release form itself on our um, state website. If you need me to send it to you, I would be happy to do so. But that way we've got it um, and I can share it with National Council. I could use it on a flyer or whatever the case might be. 
um, a receipt file. So start a file for receipts right from the start. You may already do this for your P card statement if you have one. Um, I know and what I do is it's really just like it's like a plastic folder and anytime I purchase something online um, I will print it out right then, write the account number on the top of the receipt and put it in my folder. Um, if I buy something at the store whether it's like whatever Walmart or Sam's and it's a paper receipt I actually keep it in my wallet um, on one side where my P card Card is but I know it's always there um, I could I guess put it in my um, plastic folder but I know the two places that I need to look whenever I get my P card statement at the end of the month and I've already got the account number wrote um, on the receipts right when I purchased it so I'm not gonna forget you know if for um, one month that I have a bunch of um, charges I don't have to go through and think what account I'm meant to charge it to so just kind of keep that in mind get you a central location of where you're gonna keep your receipts you can also do a digital file where you go ahead and scan each receipt as you get it um, and save it on your computer whatever works for you um, but just kind of be thinking through ways that you can be organized so you don't have to worry about losing that receipt um, you know and if you have the p card for other accounts that you know um, what you are going to charge it to um, organization so this kind of goes back to goals and the receipts and everything but um, just get yourself ready um, and set yourself up from for success from the beginning of this grant period so that page or slide that I shared that has all of the dates on it for reports and budget sheets and um, training and evaluation go ahead and put that in your calendar if you use a paper calendar write it down if you use Outlook calendar the digital version write it down if you do both write it down if you need to put sticky notes um, around your office so you know that it's coming up um, I know that helps me whatever you need but just you know have that already written down prepared um, and so that you can be um, early even um, or at least on time um, work with schools so if you don't already have a partnership with schools um, think about working with teachers in health and wellness PE or the guidance counselor um, you know just those classes where this can this material can fit very easily um, and um, those teachers would appreciate you coming in and delivering that programming um, training so um, take time to train your teen leaders and volunteers if you have them delivering this um, uh, material don't assume that they know it walk them through it and make sure they know that your door is always open I'm almost certain that in both of the beginner and intermediate um, uh, curriculum there is like a, a, a template for a training agenda um, and it may be like a half day or a full day of training so feel free to flip through that once you get it um, just to give you a quick idea of things that you can go over and then the last slide for best practices um, reach out to other counties if you need some ideas or are stuck in a rut I'm not saying don't contact me um, but those who are out there boots on the ground and have delivered this program from the last 11 years um, have more advice than I will ever have um, and so I really think that that's a great um, you know thing in our back pocket to use and collaborate with others in our state who are already um, doing these things and may have uh, faced the same challenges or obstacles that you may be facing hands-on so the curriculum really is set up to be hands-on anyways um, but just kind of reiterating this make sure they are um, getting engaged doing the lesson rather than just sitting there um, I think there's many ways to use a worksheet rather than sit in your desk and write it down with a pencil you can put post-its around the wall on a room if you have in, um, internet access you can use um, online tools like goose chase that's a digital scavenger hunt um, just online tools that make things fun um, and, and engaging um, I think there's opportunity to use breakout boxes if you have have a breakout box and if you have the time to do it um, but you know be creative there there is no limit here um, on the ways that you can deliver this and make it fun um, and I've already kind of said flyers or with the newsletters but display the Health Rocks materials on school bulletin boards to reinforce your message so you could even have an activity as part of your Health Rocks lesson or um, with your group of students at, to develop um, you know a Health Rocks like um, a, a bulletin board message um, and then you can just post it up there so make it a contest if you wanted to you know use it with the um, um, 
the poster contest. Um, so there's um, many opportunities for that as well, where it's not just you developing something and taking the time to do it. And then incentives, we've already talked about that, but use it for participation. So um, you can do those small things like stickers and pencils, bracelets, um, and then save bigger things like water bottles or a drawstring bag or a nice little notebook, whatever, for after they've completed the 10 hours of programming and the survey. So I've tried to go through this fairly quickly, so um, it is about an hour, but if you do have any questions about anything that I went over, please, once again, don't hesitate um, to reach out at any time. Uh, my direct line is on the screen as well as my email address. Um, I hope that you all have a very successful year. Um, I know that you will do great things, and just please remember that I am here to support you. Thanks so much.